an unstoppable force of nature, a monster born from the atomic age, Godzilla is more than just a fictional creature. In the 1954 classic Gojira, this towering reptilian titan embodies destruction and survival in equal measure. But if Godzilla were real, what would its biology look like? How could a creature like this evolve, and what adaptations might allow it to survive in our world? Let's explore the biology of the King of the Monsters. Standing at a staggering 50 meters tall in the original 1954 film, Godzilla appears as a towering bipedal reptilian creature, a hybrid of dinosaur, marine reptile, and radiation-spawned anomaly. With its massive bulk, tough hide, and iconic atomic breath, Godzilla seems perfectly adapted to destruction. To begin, let's analyse how such a massive creature could exist without collapsing under its own weight. One of the biggest challenges for any giant organism is gravity. Godzilla's immense size and bipedal stance would put extraordinary pressure on its bones and muscles. To withstand this, Godzilla's skeletal structure must be incredibly dense, likely composed of a material far stronger than calcium-based bone, perhaps reinforced with mineral deposits or a unique biological polymer. Its legs are thick and pillar-like, similar to sauropod dinosaurs, which helps distribute its enormous weight. The musculature would also need to be highly efficient, capable of producing immense force with minimal energy expenditure. But what about its heart and lungs? Moving blood and oxygen throughout such a massive body would require a gigantic, multi-chambered heart, and possibly multiple lungs or air sacs to keep the system running. This would be similar to how birds and large dinosaurs, like sauropods, used air sacs to maintain oxygen flow efficiently. Perhaps the most iconic feature of Godzilla is its atomic breath, a devastating beam of radioactive energy. But how could a living organism produce such a weapon? One possibility is that Godzilla has specialised bionuclear organs that can harness and store radioactive energy. Much like electric eels generate electricity through ion channels, Godzilla might use biological processes to convert radioactive material into usable energy. These organs could release bursts of concentrated energy when needed, functioning like a natural particle accelerator. Alternatively, Godzilla's atomic breath could be a superheated jet of plasma. By combining stored radiation with unique chemical compounds in its body, Godzilla could produce plasma-like emissions that ignite the air. This would explain the visible heat distortion and destruction caused by its breath. The ability to utilise radiation would also imply that Godzilla's cells can not only survive radiation exposure, but thrive on it. A feature unheard of in terrestrial life, but plausible in extremophile organisms. Godzilla's origins are tied to nuclear radiation, a byproduct of atomic testing. In reality, radiation damages DNA and is lethal to most life. Yet Godzilla appears to absorb and utilise it as an energy source. This raises the possibility that Godzilla's cells have evolved a form of radiation resistance. Organisms like Deinococcus radiodurans, a real-life bacterium, can repair extreme DNA damage caused by radiation. Godzilla's biology might take this to an unprecedented level, with cellular mechanisms that not only repair damage, but harness radiation for energy. Its ability to survive in the deep ocean, where high pressures and extreme temperatures exist, also suggests adaptations like ultra-dense tissue, specialised respiratory systems, and an efficient metabolism to endure low oxygen levels. Godzilla's skin, tough and scarred, could act as both armour and a shield against environmental extremes, including nuclear fallout. Where exactly did Godzilla come from? The film hints that Godzilla is an ancient creature, awakened and mutated by nuclear testing. If this is true, 
Godzilla might represent a surviving member of a prehistoric lineage, perhaps related to marine reptiles like mosasaurs or plesiosaurs that lived millions of years ago. Over time, exposure to radiation could have triggered rapid mutations, giving Godzilla its massive size, atomic breath, and other unique traits. This would make Godzilla an extreme example of radiation-driven evolution, a concept explored in theoretical biology but not observed in nature. Another theory is that Godzilla is a completely unique organism, an evolutionary offshoot from a time when life experimented with extreme adaptations. This lineage may have been dormant for millennia, surviving in deep ocean trenches before re-emerging in the Atomic Age. While Godzilla is portrayed as nearly unstoppable, even the King of the Monsters has weaknesses, subtle cracks in its otherwise impervious biology. Firstly, despite its tough hide and regenerative abilities, Godzilla's biological systems are not entirely invulnerable. In the original 1954 film, the military's conventional weapons, tanks, artillery and fighter jets cause little visible harm. But the sustained attacks may serve to fatigue the creature, slowly draining its energy reserves. Godzilla's immense size requires an extraordinary amount of energy to maintain, meaning prolonged battles could gradually wear it down. Its most glaring weakness, however, is its vulnerability to advanced or experimental weaponry. The Oxygen Destroyer, a device that removes oxygen from water, proves to be Godzilla's undoing in the original film. This suggests a reliance on oxygen for cellular respiration, Despite Godzilla's adaptations to extreme environments, even it cannot survive without the basic resources life depends on. Another potential weakness is Godzilla's energy reliance. If its body depends on radiation or nuclear energy, depriving it of these sources for prolonged periods could weaken it significantly, forcing it into dormancy or a hibernation-like state. This could explain why Godzilla retreats to the ocean depths when not actively feeding or engaging threats. Finally, Godzilla's massive size, while an advantage in combat, might also limit its agility and speed. Large, slow movements leave it vulnerable to attacks from smaller, more agile opponents or precisely targeted weaponry. These weaknesses remind us that even the most fearsome creatures are not without limitations. Godzilla's biology, while a marvel of strength and resilience, is not invincible, a fact that highlights the delicate balance all life must strike between power and survival. Godzilla remains one of the most iconic creatures in cinema history, both a cautionary tale and a symbol of nature's unstoppable power. While a real-life Godzilla may not walk the Earth, exploring its biology gives us a deeper appreciation of the science behind the fiction. But what do you think? Could a creature like Godzilla conceivably exist in our universe given the right set of circumstances? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below, and don't forget to like the video and subscribe for more speculative biology videos. This has been the BewareCast, and I'll catch you in the next video. Take care.